So this is Trade Talks, a new and weekly podcast about the economics of international trade policy. I'm Chad Bown, a senior fellow with the Peterson Institute for International Economics in Washington. And I'm Sumeya Keynes, economics and trade correspondent for The Economist in London. Each week, Sumeya and I are going to discuss the most interesting things that we can think about involving international trade of that week. Sometimes it will be super newsy, we might talk about the latest trade deal, or maybe what Donald Trump has announced to hit his trading partners. Other times we're going to indulge our inner geeks. I'm looking forward to discussing trade conflicts. So this means things from little trade spats to bloody trade wars. And that's bloody in the British sense, not in the American sense. Thank you for clarifying that. So talking about why countries are really going to trade battle over critical things that might be relevant for war, like steel and aluminum that are a threat to national security, or cybersecurity, information technology for cyber war, or ooh, bananas, food fights and food wars. My favorite. And I'm sure you would all love to hear about how much the economics of cheese can tell you about the problems in global trade. That is a treat coming up for you. So you may know Chad from Twitter. He's currently being quoted in every single broadsheet newspaper under the sun. Um, But Chad, why why should we listen to you? What brought you here? I started my career as an economics professor, and I did that for a number of years. But more recently, before I came to Peterson in 2016, I'd spent the last seven or eight years or so working in trade policy. So more recently, I was working for the World Bank, helping to advise developing countries worried about their trade policies. And then earlier, I had been working in the Obama White House, worried very much about U.S. trade policy. But since I've been at the Peterson Institute, basically, I focused my time on Donald Trump and worrying about his trade policy. And I guess you must worry about that quite a lot. I do. (laughs) So how about you? What do you spend your time thinking about when you work on trade? What brought you to trade? So I started out as a pretty general economist. When I, my first job was with the British government, I was a policy advisor. Then that wasn't geeky enough for me. So I went to work for the Institute for Fiscal Studies and Economics Research. And then I came here to The Economist, where I was this global economics correspondent. And then after a while, my editor said, hey, why don't you start covering trade? Don't worry, nothing much ever happens. It'll be fairly sleepy. You know, you can get a specialism and that'll be great. So, so that was then. And and things are a bit different now. It's it's kind of blown up. So it's, kind of, it, you know, it's become a full-time, full-time thing pretty much. But also I've been totally captured by the trade geeks. I am totally indoctrinated. When there's a new trade deal signed, I get excited. I'm super interested in anti-dumping duties. Like, how has this happened to me? Okay, so Chad, what is your favorite trade story? Well, in this podcast, I feel like it's really likely that we're going to end up talking about a lot of really negative things, trade battles, trade wars, trade disputes. So I thought I would kick us off with what my feel-good trade story of the year is, uh, which is a relatively little-known trade deal, a trade agreement called the Information Technology Agreement. And so this was an agreement that was starting to be implemented last year in 2016 by more than 20 major economies of the world, so all the big ones, China, the United States, European Union, covering 200 products or so and about $1.3 trillion of trade. Okay. But why is this interesting? Well, I found it interesting because there's something in this trade deal for everyone. So you cut tariffs to zero and it's a win, win, win. So for example, if you're a millennial, there's stuff in there that you would like. It cuts tariffs to zero, these import taxes on video game consoles, digital cameras, microphones, and headsets. So duty-free beats headsets for everyone. For baby boomers, so if you're thinking about your parents or grandparents, there's tariff cuts in there for MRI machines, CAT scanners, x-ray equipment, medical devices. So if you're worried about health care costs in the United States, for example, in this big debate over Obamacare reform, hey, we can help to reduce some of those costs through this trade agreement. And then finally, if you're one of these giant multinational companies that's involved in global supply chains, we'll talk a lot about those. The product list in this information technology agreement more than 70 times uses the word parts. So parts for processors, controllers, memory chips, circuits, semiconductors, all these critical components for the gadgets that are going on and being made in the global economy. All this stuff is in this really fabulous recent trade deal. How about you? You have a recent uh, trade story that's that's captured your attention? So when I was thinking about this, I was trying to think about the story I most enjoyed writing. And actually, the one that I picked was also kind of sad. So I remembered this new study that came out. It was actually by some economists affiliated with the Peterson Institute. And it found that this deal, the TPP, was going to raise America's real income 
by around 0.5% by 2030. And with the caveat that those numbers are super uncertain. And and this was great. It's It wasn't clickbait, though. So I needed some way to make it sound, you know, interesting. And I came across this idea, why don't I use chicken to tell the story? So I started investigating chicken and I just got lost in this depth of chicken economics. So it turns out that Americans consume loads of chicken breast, but they're not that keen on eating the feet. So for every, I think it's five pounds of, of white meat, they export a pound of the other stuff, except they can't that much because if they try to sell it to Vietnam, for example, they face a 40% tariff. And this is just the kind of thing that the TPP was going to eliminate. So I write this piece. There are chicken pun in you know every single paragraph. You know, chickens can't fly freely across borders because of these tariffs, or indeed very far at all. But then the kicker of my piece is saying there are these big costs to delay. So if you sign this deal and you implement it in 2017 rather than 2016, you'll forego $94 billion worth of, of economic output. And that was that was then at the beginning of 2016. And obviously, since then, times have changed. TPP is is for the American chicken exporters kind of dead. So that's my favorite but slightly bittersweet story. Yeah. That is the end of the sneak preview of the Trade Talks podcast. We really, really hope that you're going to enjoy it. If you love it, we'd be so grateful if you could leave us reviews on iTunes. It really, really helps other people find the show. If you hate it, that's cool too. But maybe your friends won't. So feel free to tell them about it. And of course, you should follow us on Twitter. I'm at Samaya Keynes. And I'm at Chad Bowne. And you can follow us the show at at trade underscore underscore talks. That's, if you missed it, at trade underscore underscore talks. Because when talking trade, one underscore just isn't enough. Chad, we really need to think of a better strapline than that. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Mm-hmm.